Well, thanks for coming um, to our PIC meeting on this little colder day, huh? What, what it's supposed to be, though, in February, I think, so. And I'm a snowmobiler, so I'm excited that it's getting cold. Maybe we'll get snow, so I don't think so up here. But um, Believe it or not, I think exactly five years ago, on February 5th, we passed our bond proposal. So if you recall that, it's just a, you would think Cindy and I planned this date out, but it was February 5th of 15, we passed, it was the election day, and we passed our bond proposal. So, and we try to keep people up to date through uh, communiques and what we're doing, but sometimes you don't get the full picture of um, where we are with the process, and you don't remember it and live it like we do every day. So we're going to refresh you just a little bit of where we stand um, at this point. But we did pass it in February of that year, but the bonds were sold that spring in April. In that first summer, um, because of design that, we did a very low amount of work. If you remember, it was like tor tor tore some portables out and we put boilers in the middle schools. But then from there, it's taken off. And so a little bit about the bond that you passed on that day. Um, because of the way the Treasury wanted us to break it out, plus we wanted to keep our millage rate below three mils. If you remember, we had no debt millage rate, which was... Ironically, we went to Treasury. They said, you must have a mistake because you say you've never had debt. And every school district said debt. Well, we hadn't. And our, best we can tell in our history, we've never had bonding debt in this district. Um, and so uh, we, not, a, not that I'm proud of having to take debt on, but we needed to because the facilities were so old when we came in and did the study. And so to keep that millage rate, um, you sell off what you need for a while and then you sell more, and that way you can keep your rate lower. Don't take the full debt. We didn't, we didn't owe 121,000, 121 million um, from day one. And so we broke into three series. The first series being the largest to get us rolling, and that was 72, a little over 72 million, and that was sold May of 15, and that's what we've been working off of until recently. And series two we sold last spring, and um, we last summer, um, Somewhere in the middle of summer, Series 1 was spent off, and Series 2 started. And we'll talk about that because Adams was the school that was split between the two series going forward. And Series 3 is yet to be sold, and so that will be sold in May of 23. And that one is pretty much the replenishing of technology and busing. And so we, we wanted to make sure we could sustain when we built this. We built this in 14, this plan. Um, we were going to one-to-one -one technology. We wanted to make sure we could um, sustain that going forward. We also want to replace all of our buses um, between the start of the bond to the end of the bond. And so to do that, you don't want to buy all your buses up front because they all, all age out at the same time again. And so we want to do a few at a time, a few at a time each year model, and then spread it out over time. And so um, we're not really sure on where we're going still on devices because it looks like there's going to be a day. It's changing quickly. You know, it may be allowing students to bring some of their own from home as well. But we have the funds in there to do so if we need so. Series one, here are some of the projects it covered. If you recall, the first major mission out was that we were going to close Woodcrest and Carpenter as those two buildings had pretty much aged out or were not buildings we want to invest heavily in to bring them up to 21st century learning spaces. Um, and so East Lawn was closed and Carpenter was closed and then reopened for other purposes. And so we built Central Park. Um, Central Park for the most part, it was a brand new school, but if you recall, part of the footprint stayed. And so our present media center and um, cafeteria, cafeteria, down to the cafeteria, were the old building in there. And so um, there's still that part's still in there. And then we saved another 50% of the footprint with Central Auditorium, where it became, instead of an auditorium, kind of more of a performing arts spaces, so we have more spaces around that as well. And that project, originally when we designed it, was going to be just an elementary school, and we decided along about that time that STEM was moving, and we saw no one in the country starting STEM where we thought it should start, which is at the elementary. It was more emphasized in the secondary, and we wanted to expose kids early, so we decided to STEMize Central Park, which cost us additional dollars to do so. And so we spent more on Central Park right up front, but you'll see that we're still under budget and we continue to be going forward. So we're going to show you that we've done a lot of extra projects still within the theme of the bond going forward on all of this. Then we did Central Auditorium. We took that very old facility, separated it from the old building, closed it off, and we uh, rebuilt it inside as well as the outlook. Outside, we stained that brick. We did some metal 
on it. And um, we have to give our um, architect a lot of credit because when we originally studied it, we were thinking we need a new performing arts center. And he said, I don't think so. This thing's beautiful. I think I can recreate it. And it's going to serve you absolutely well. And it really has. It's worked very, very well. And I think we all doubted what he could do. But we're really, really happy with it. Um, one of the themes in the bond was security and safety. And that means a lot of things. And we all just think of more um, security and safety for the bad guy issue that's occurred. But there's more to that one. And we'll show you that. But some of the things we did that first year was we um, put secure entrances in to several of the schools and we added cameras and these secure entrances are now complete in all of our buildings going forward. The other one, other theme on this was to save energy. So we were not a very energy efficient district at the time. You know, East Lawn might have been the best case scenario was we have a boiler down there in that building um, that's going to be coming down in the next few weeks that was originally a coal boiler and then it was converted to fuel oil and then it was converted to natural gas. And, and so it's an 80 year old boiler sitting in there that was converted three times and it was not efficient at all. But we also lack, when we talk about efficiencies, not only on just upgrading boiler systems, but we lacked controls in the district. And so, you know, you would run wide open hot in spots, you'd run cold in other places, we couldn't shut them down at night very well, uh, we had a lot of lack of controls and so now like we do at home we got programmable thermostats and we have that district wide where we can control and save energy. We've saved enough energy that all the air conditioning we've had, it's been a net neutral so far. So. And that's another point. We had AC um, in all of our buildings, including we're beginning to do some units at Northeast to get us by um, on that second floor. Demos, and so we, you know, one of the themes in there was we had, um, at the time, 21 buildings, I think, in the district, and we were only using 13. And it was time to figure out what we wanted to do with that, even though it was painful for many communities when they, uh, out there that lost their school when we closed those. It was needed because of the size of the population. When we closed some of those older schools, um, they very quickly get in bad shape. And so, you know, you shut the AC down and you got mold and um, you got other issues going on in those buildings. And um, once you close and you go 13 months without students, you have to meet all new modern codes. And so these buildings pretty much would have took millions of dollars if you could have even brought them to the coach to, to reopen them as schools. And so when we looked at our population and our study of birth rates going forward, we knew we were never going to grow, grow enough to ever need these buildings again. And so the decision was to bring down those buildings and get them out of the way. And so we took down Parkdale, Cook, um, Central Middle School portions of it, and we had a couple modular buildings that were in bad shape out there. We still got a couple behind Dow High that Taffel's using, but we, we were questioning if they don't need to go away or they need to get remodeled somehow because they're not very good as well. Um, technology, so we wanted to go one-to-one. -one. We began to implement that, and we implemented the start with the middle school. We chose the middle school because when state testing went all electronic, we test every single student at every grade level in the middle school. In the elementary, is that not the case? In the high school, it's not the case. And so we really needed the technology to be able to test all those kids quickly. And so they were the first gr group to go. And then we followed with the elementary and middle school. Behind the scene, someday we'd love to show you behind the scene. It's not very necessarily a, a wow factor, but there's been millions of dollars built into our structures behind the scene where you go away from servers, you go to the cloud, you go to security, recabling, a lot of things that we've done behind the scene to make the structure of our technology work. Midland Community Stadium, the track at the time, if you recall, was in such bad shape that spring of 15 when we passed the bond, we did not run track on it in the spring. We sent uh, Midland High across town to, to run track. And so it was in very bad shape. We resurfaced it. It got resurfaced under warranty because it wasn't done right. And it still wasn't done right to our specs. And so we have recently won that battle. And it will be redone again this summer for the third time. And so we've had a few issues there as well. Buses, and so we purchased nine buses in Series 1. We're, uh, next month's board meeting, we'll be uh, approving six more going forward. And so you can see that we continue to replace those buses as we go through there. Adams Elementary, that's the one that was split. So we started when we still had funds with Series 1, and we're completing with Series 2 now going forward. And Adams is, is getting near completion. It'll be done, um, basically we'll say June. Um, there may be a little cleanup after that. But they're in their new space is being built now, and they, we have taken over the old gymnasium at this point, and they'll be converted to the media center. And there's a little bit of cleanup work going on outside in the grounds and some 
uh, pieces there, but Adams is finally getting close. As we tell everyone, these really are year, year and a half, two year projects before they're complete. And so they, they go quite some time in there. So talked about Adams, secondary buildings, and we've done some work at all of those. Still more to come in the secondary, so you'll see that, um, that when we show you some bomb work lists, we're pretty much done with the elementaries except for some technology down the road, replacing phone systems, some pieces like that. But we've done pieces along the way at the four secondaries, but there's still more to go on those buildings going forward. And you know media centers was one of our themes. <coughs> it was at the elementary, so we didn't think we had adequate media centers. They were at the end of the hallway, so we took old gymnasiums and made a media centers. Um, and then we've, re we've done those as well at the secondary level going forward. These but, are Yep. So in series three, which we'll be selling going forward, as I mentioned earlier, technology refresh. I actually think there's two in there. We, we're not sure we're going to need both now. Um, and if that's the case, then those dollars can be used still in the theme of what the bond was. So reconstruction, technology, and busing. Um, there is some more furniture purchases. So we've purchased a lot of furniture, but it's been really more for the new spaces. So every media center got new. Every office when we touched it was new. Every cafeteria uh, got new when we were done doing that. And by the way, you'll see um, our when the bond was passed, we were building cafeterias, but the bond did not cover um, the cooking area. And so that's an add that we've been able to do because we've been under budget. We've added all those kitchens into the elementaries. That was not originally on the list to do so. So if you go to our website, um, the document on the left is what we call our, our work list. So this was the actual wish list that we sent to the state of Michigan in 2014. This is what we kind of hypothesized we would need. This document could be tweaked or changed to be over time, but at that time we decided to do so. Um, and we've gone in and, and they trail about a month or two behind the work, um, but they're pretty much close to being up to date at this point. Um, as we complete work, we go in and we highlight the areas that we've done to show they're completed. It shows where the dollars come, what series and all that by each building. We'll, we'll show you one of those just briefly in a minute. So that's on our website as well. Um, the middle one is an update that, that we get from Barton Mallow as they're giving work, so we post that out as well. And then this is the actual budget paper if you want to see how we're doing on those pieces. Cindy, can we go to the website? We'll show them this one at least. Maybe? No? Well, don't worry about it. Then I'll adjust here. But when you go, the, what, what I really want to show you this is if you go through the six elementaries, you'll see highlighted, everything on there is pretty much highlighted and done. But the only thing left on the six elementaries is a phone ref refresh and staff computers to be replaced. And so we've, um, the phone, we think we can get another year out of it. And the staff, um, we keep pushing off and trying to get more out of it. Because there's, part of our theme on this is if we can get more out of our buses and computers and um, push off the purchase a little longer, that's the less you'll ever have to look at that down the road. And so we're trying to push that off. And we've made do with staff computers. They're probably getting there. They're probably getting a little frustrated with some of them. And so right now, um, tech department's looking at that and figure out what device and where do we go with that purchase. The phone systems, I think we're okay for another year, and then we're going to have to get out of, out of the present phone system. And they're pretty large purchases when we look at those. Um, when you go to the secondary, you're going to see like 50% of them highlighted. And as I said, there's two more summers of work going on in the secondary um, before we can s highlight those and say they're completed as well. And why they're rebooting here? Sure. What upgrades did you do to the science lab in middle school? We did high school science labs. Just high school, not middle school? Correct. Middle school on the list. Um, you're gonna, Especially the ventilation in the hoods. Yeah, I, I don't know if they are or not. I'd probably have to go to the bond lit work list and see, see if they are. So we review those lit work lists each time we go out to do a, um, the next bid. So I can't tell you that I study those daily or not. But it would be on that bond work list to show you if, if it was intended to have that. Maybe if we get in there, we can take a look. Can you get in? No, we don't want to go there? Right Say that? So, what are they doing at Dow High? I see they're so, something in the yeah. last week or 
Yeah, so that platform out front, if you've been to Dow High, so lots of steps, and it's all broken up, and we've patched it through the years, and the top is also pretty broken up. And then it, when they built that, um, you know, I think they had dreams of probably kids loitering out there and eating lunch and doing those things um, because that's a lot of cement up there and a lot of space, um, and so that's cement that has to be maintained, snow plowed, cleaned, all that, which we don't and we don't have the manpower to do so. And with school safety where it's gone, it's not like you really don't want kids just loitering outside with all those pieces of it, and so we don't really do that. So it's in bad shape and has to be replaced. So the new design has that um, being replaced and scaled back. You're going to see two sets of steps, if I recall. You're going to see less cement pulled back and a little more green space and trees put into that as well. So that's been on our work list all along because that's an issue over there if you've walked it. And so we've patched it up the best we can, but it's in really rough shape up in front of Dow High. Anyway, you can go to look at those sheets on our website. We have to go forward. To date, um, what, we've, what we've accomplished is $78 million in work since 2015. And in there, uh, on top of what I didn't mention, if you remember, we've created STEM maker spaces in all the places. I talked about technology, um, classroom technology. I talked about media centers, so we won't do that again. We talked about Central Park, video surveillance, card access. Um, and in that safety we talked about earlier was also traffic flow at our schools. We knew we had major issues of traffic flow, and we had traf um, you know, pedestrians and car traffic and buses in many locations going on. And I will tell you, um, I wish we had space at all our buildings like when we went to Central Park, um, but we don't. And so we, I would tell you that we've improved safety and the traffic flow in all the buildings that we've touched so far but there's still s several that we could just probably never can solve the full issue because you know they were built in the 50s where uh, students walked to school more and they didn't ride on buses as much and they certainly didn't have the number of parents dropping them off with cars. That's, that's a phenomenon that what those schools weren't built for in those neighborhoods. Chestnut Hill probably be in the worst back in that neighborhood if you've ever been in that area. But Adams is certainly a problem. We're landlocked there as well. And we weren't able to do, completely fix all those, but we were able to change that traffic flow at most of the buildings, including the high schools. So we've done a redesign at Dow High that we think we've made that a little safer as well going forward. HVAC was a big, big piece of everything we wanted to do. And so that that's um, modernizing our heating and cooling systems, modernizing them with controls, and actually adding cooling in most locations. And so there was a few, little bit of cooling sporadically in the district, but now we have cooling everywhere except for parts of Northeast. Additional work. So we're really proud to say that we, with our bid savings and the interest that we've earned off of the funds, um, while we've ha held onto the funds what, before it was taken to be spent, we've garnered enough money that we've done an additional $9 million of work so far in the district. And so every building in the district has had work above and beyond that scope that was originally designed. And so um, some of those items are listed here, but certainly not all inclusive. So we stemicized Central Park. So it is an elementary school with no maker spaces originally designed. And um, some of the luxury uh, things that we put in for science were all added afterwards um, and put in there. Um, the auditorium was never going to have brick staining, metal panels. The outside envelope was never to be replaced, the doors and the windows. But we've done all of that. Woodcrest, because Woodcrest had four sections at every grade level, and one grade level had to be three because it's all classroom space they had. Um, we were, we were going to see a pitch point where we had a problem. We either had to um, take four sections and push it into three, which you, most parents there would not have liked because that would have been very large class sizes, or we decided to take uh, what we originally designed to be a STEM space and turn it into a classroom. They gave them four classrooms for each grade level, and then that meant we had to build a new STEM maker space. And so we did, so that's an addition that's above and above uh, uh, to Woodcrest as well. We've done an additional 1. million in mechanical equipment. So Dow High has 36, I don't know if that's the right number, I can't remember now, 36 air handlers up in its attic up above. And we had designed originally in the bond in 2014 that 11 of them needed to be replaced. 
Well, when we tried to pick out 11 of them, the 11 that are the most oldest, they were kind of sporadically in there. It'd be like moving one huge air handler to get to the next one out of the attic, and we really thought it was advisable. It'd be like going into an engine and to replace a part. Meanwhile, you're leaving old parts in the way, and so we decided to, we should do them all with our bid savings. We were able to do so. So Dow High will have all 36 done at the end of the summer. Um, 36 in one summer was too short of a timeline to do it, so we did half last summer, and we're doing half again this year at Dow High. Um, the digital signs you've seen at uh, Central Park, the auditorium, the two high schools so far were all additions, something that we felt that was needed to communicate with you on a regular basis. Um, we've added more controls than it was originally in the de design. We've added more flooring replacement as well. And I'm sure if you've ever renovated your house or you go through, you always end up adding painting. Afterwards, you, you do a bunch of new work and go, why wouldn't we paint that old wall? It really looks bad next to that new door that we just put in. Painting was a huge thing we've added through there. <coughs> we've added additional concrete, replace it, we re and we also um, refinished the uh, gym floor as well with bud savings. So $9 million extra work is what we've gone through at that time. This summer, yep, you did right. This this summer we have six million dollars of work already bid out, and the bidders or the contractors are selected to go. And this is the, pretty much the the broad topics of where we're going. So you'll see middle school gym renovations, um, Jefferson old wood bleachers they have to replace. Uh, most of them will get paint, some new padding, some new backstops. Um, Floors, floors being refinished, not replaced on them. So a nice touch up in the middle school gymnasiums as well. Maybe one of them has new lighting already, and I think the other one's getting new lighting in there. Um, middle school classroom technology upgrades, like we've done throughout the district. You know, we, we're putting in new uh, projectors. We're putting the classroom sound systems in there, and, and some whiteboards where it needed to be gone in there. So that's going through the middle schools. Then we're finally to the Midi Midland Stadium turf replacement. So that turf was. Um, is 14 years old, designed to be there 11 years, so we've gotten three additional years out of it. But at this point, we're getting very close where it's no longer safe. So you you know, you know shave it off each year and you clean it up and the substructure gets a little sort and a little less soft for the players. At some point, you reach a safety problem there. And so that turf will be replaced along with the track being resurfaced under warranty this summer. The tennis courts, so this, this would be an upgrade too. So originally we had um, replacement of the tennis, tennis courts at Dow High, which were in the, excuse me, at Midland High, which was in bad shape. So we are going to replace those. Dow High, we had a resurfacing in 2014, which was not in such bad shape. And now when we look at it, it is in such a severe shape, it would not be worth resurfacing. And so we are going to completely replace both of those tennis courts so that with our bond savings, we're able to do that. And right now, what we've discovered is blacktop has kind of changed over time. And the amount of cement or steel you can put in a blacktop has changed for tennis courts. And that's why you're seeing a lot of cracking in blacktop. So the preferred surface today is a concrete surface because it lasts twice as long. And, and we're able to afford that. We bid it out, both out both to see where it came in. We got a very nice bid savings, uh, or cheaper than we thought on the cement, plus with our savings we can do it long term, we would be better off to do so. So that's an upgrade at the high schools. I mentioned the uh, 16 more units going in at Dow High, that's going on, and any day now you're gonna see Eastland East Lawn and Franklin Center be, start coming down. So we've already abated the asbestos in there. Um, any of our old buildings are still loaded with asbestos because it's covered in spots. And once you go to do construction, you can't expose people to that, so that has to be taken out. Those are pretty big ticket items to remove asbestos. And so that's been done, and now they'll come down. Uh, both will be turned into green spaces this time. The East Lawn we're going to keep as green space and work with community and on recreational use most likely for it. Um, the Franklin Center, we think we got something pretty creative over there. We're gonna work with the city on subplotting the, the lots in there. And we're going to do some of our um, construction trade homes in there, our, where our kids build homes. And then, we're, um, then we'll probably let contractors build some so there's a mixed build in there as well. So, um, and our concept is, off the property, as we sell that and there's profit there, is that we may put that in the Midland Community Foundation and endow it that will buy equipment for our, our career technical education programs. We're always struggling to keep that 
equipment um, current, and so we could put it in there and dial it that will last forever and be a sustainable way of um, purchasing equipment. We'll turn that into an asset. Bid savings, we still have three million, so all that additional work, and I think we might have a slide that shows you some of the additional work we've done. What we showed you, we've done nine million dollars of additional work. We still have three million dollars in bid savings. And where does that come from? That comes from coming in under bid, and then um, when we sold the, the bonds, you invest it and pull off what you need to make the payments. And if you invest well, you make a lot of interest. Well, if you know, there's markets finally turned and we're making interest the last few years on investments, and we've done very well on that. And so we're still about $3 million in our savings to go forward um, for additional projects or things we see that maybe didn't go well or things that should have been, you would like to have done as we go forward. So um, we got a couple more years of that, and we'll see how that goes. Again, earlier when I mentioned um, the bond proposal, we basically – put it on four themes. These were the four original themes. So student safety and security, which was certainly um, Sally, port entries, access cards, cameras, but also was traffic flow, safety. We even included that buses have to be safe. You know, when we're running 17, 18, 19 year old buses and we're running them out in the Mills Township on back roads, do we really want one broke down? It's 40 minutes before we can get to them. Um, and so stuff like that in there as well. We want to increase our energy efficiency as we were pretty in, um, old in equipment, lack of controls throughout the district. We knew there'd be savings long term for the general fund there. That was a smart thing to do. We wanted to address the aging facilities that were sitting out there empty um, and what we were going to do with those going forward. And then we wanted to really turn into 21st century learning spaces. So, you know, 28 kids in a row <laughs> sitting and doing sit and get is, is no longer how we teach children today. And so that those space have to be adaptable to what we do today. So adaptability and flexibility uh, were in collaboration space were the themes on those, um, switching those spaces over. And thank you to our citizens for willing to support that. And I think when I was going around five years ago and talking about that bond, uh, there will be a time period. The first set of bonds, if I recall, was 15-year payment on that, and then the other ones were around 20. Um, I expect somewhere in another seven, eight years we'll be able to come back to the citizens. I probably won't be here, but we set that up so that um, – the, we'll ask the citizens, are you willing to continue to pay 2.95, and here's what our district needs, and here's what we can do. And we believe, and we've been upfront about that, that Northeast will have to be replaced at that time. So Northeast has some substructure cracking going on that we did a year of crack monitoring on with engineers, and they determined about somewhere down that line you should begin to think about replacing as that building sags with the structure cracking on that second floor will become an issue as we go forward. So Northeast will have the lightest investment of all the buildings. If you go in the bond, you'll see there's less going on at Northeast than in all the rest of the buildings. Uh, um, but we certainly need to get it there. So we have, um, that building is a boiler, hot water boiler. And so putting AC, um, blowing in AC is really, you know, you'd have to run a parallel system to that because you can't add on to that. So as we struggled and figured out um, what to do with that building on its heat and that second floor particularly, we've gone to what's called a split unit. So you've all stayed in a hotel that has one unit at the end of the wall, and it makes a lot of noise, and, but it cools the room. And so those have become a little more efficient, and so um, the, their energy efficiency is better. Um, and those units, we've, we've piloted a couple of them in the second floor. They worked. They cooled the rooms. Um, they take some of the humidity down, and so, I don't know, Brian, we got about 12 of them in. I think we're doing another six this summer. Our goal is to have the whole second floor northeast um, in the classrooms, AC, to make that heat better. Northeast also has some aging tile in the classrooms. That tile, um, if you had to replace it, has asbestos, very costly to replace. So typically what you'll see on older buildings where you know you're not going to keep them is you can cover versus take out. And so you'll see the classrooms being converted to carpeting. That's all happening through our general fund. So we have done, recovered financially well enough that we have built a capital improvements fund into our general fund. Um, I think we projected we were going to spend about a million. We spent probably a million and a half 
ish, oh, close to two. I was being cautious by the time we're done. So we're investing heavily in our buildings with our capital improvement too because we're so far behind. And we, can, and we can do that and sustain. It's not overspending. We're in good shape on that right now. And so a lot of what you see on Northeast, a lot of the blacktop you're seeing out there is general fund. You'll see some flooring replacement through general fund. Um, when we have a few roofs that we have to do. The building next door is another one. So we'll, this summer um, we've got some block problems. And if you've noticed, it needs to be painted. And it needs some lettering and it needs to be fixed up. Um, that building's being fixed across with our general fund as well. So um, addressing all the facilities that go forward. Carpenter, when we... Um, we had always planned on putting robotics in there and moving them out of the Franklin Center. But as we got more and more into the preschool era and we got up to six, seven classrooms, we needed a, a school to hold all of that. And so we took over half that building and we remodeled that side. If you've been in there, it looks nice. That was general fund as well going forward. And Carpenter, I think, you know, it's a building that's been pretty well taken care of. A lot of private dollars were put in there, even though it's a 100-year-old building. So it still has some life in there. But... At some point, it's going to age out as well. But right now, we feel, feel pretty comfortable. What we've invested will get us 15, 20 years, and then it'll be a time to look at that as well. Questions you may have? Why did you choose carpet over vinyl, vinyl sheeting? think the carpet would be harder to keep clean at Northeast. Vinyl, you cannot go over top of that tile. Carpeting, you can go over the tile. Teachers prefer carpeting in classrooms for noise level. But so. No, actually, they kind of do. So this commercial grade ca carpeting that's out today is pretty incredible. So it, you can, it's tiles, and it cleans quite easy going forward. So, yeah, it's carpeting. And 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 um, and they're in classrooms. So typically, um, the dirt that you track in, like your home, is at your entry points, right? Okay. And so we get less into the classrooms than um, other, other spaces. If you go even to new schools, typically classrooms are, are carpeted, not hallways, not entry points. I'm curious a little bit more about the safety and security measures. I, I yep. know, maybe the website is, is more detailed. It sounds like most of it is kind of access denial, the prevention side of it. Is so right? so on, the, on the bond side, that's correct. Okay. So overall in the district, that would be one, one component of I would say three things that we've kind of addressed. To us, school safety is, yes, obviously, hardening the target. We like to use that terminology. So making it difficult for the bad guy to get there. The second one is response to an emergency um, and how we would do that and all those pieces. of it. And these are big pieces. There's lots of things. And the third one is prevention, proactive. And so we've got, well, at one time, we would say mental health, but now we've gotten into wellness and how do we prevent that happening. And, there, and of course, in those sub three categories, there's a lot of things we've done in there. Hard to target, we can go all the way to talk about window safety glassing we've put in, door boots, card access, surveillance cameras. Um, you can talk about all those things from uh, mental wellness. We have a full mental wellness initiative from training staff for recognition of kids in distress to um, um, Partnering with several, have making a partnering with our outside organizations to assist us and then to hand those kids off to, um, as well as keeping staff mentally well from, from fitness to mental health to, to all those pieces of it. So we've done a lot of work in that area as well. And then the reaction side, we've done a lot too. Um, so we, we, um, we practice drills with your kids. We also practice things without your kids. Um, we went to uh, um, an app that allowed us to, anyone to call a lockdown quickly emergency. We've got lockdown buttons in the building, so we can press a button, all the doors lock. Um, we have several of those things in place. We're stepping up that component to a new system, and it's called Raptor. You're going to see it very quickly when you walk in your building, so all of you will have to scan your driver's license when you walk in, and we will scan national and federal databases. If you've done something that maybe makes you a, um, somebody would worry about, we will know instantly. And from there, we'll make a decision if you get to enter in the building or not. It also will print a uniform badge to wear. So when I say uniform, right now you go to one building, someone hands you a pin, someone else hands you this, and this will be the same color, same location. It also will trigger every school in the district if you've been denied and why. There's a third, second component to that to help us with our volunteer management. And so for years, United Way has partnered with us trying to do our volunteers. We have over 5,000 volunteers that go in, in our buildings. We need to control that, manage that. The system has a component there. So the, the visitor management is going to happen in the next few weeks. 
followed up in a month or two with the volunteer management. And then this summer, we're going to convert from our present um, emergency response app to this app because it's a little more dynamic than our present one, a little easier to use as well. From there, we've added radio communications, PA systems. So our radios are now digital platforms that the police can scan. We're on scanning with them. Of course, you, you support it more resource officers. So we had two, but now you have it for the county, and we picked up two more in the middle schools that also now we have give us capability to do some visitation into the elementaries and get response quicker there. Um, I'm missing some things here, Jeff. Um, what we got going right now is February 24th. We have what we call county emergency responders, fire, police, ambulance, the hospital, ourselves in the county schools and we're we're going to run a tabletop exercise predominantly about midland public we're the guinea pig to start with um, where we go through a complete act of tabletop walk through our procedures try to iron out i'm an old coach try to iron out all your problems before you go to the game and then we're going to run a stimulated game on may 16th so midland high on a saturday um, we will be running a uh, emergency situation over there uh, and i'm sure the county will be notifying you because you'll see at Midland High all of that going on on a Saturday. If it goes the way we think, we're going to run through it three times and we're going to find out flaws for sure, things we weren't good at, things we need to get better at. And in that, it's not just the police response. It's going to be all the way to how do we handle the press, to how do we hand your kids back off to you, how do we really relocate them to a safe space, how do we account for every kid and who we're handing them off to, how do we transport them by buses, um, so there's a lot to that safety piece that we've been working on. So um, we will actually ship some people to the hospital. So the ambulance will come in and triage rooms as we go that day. Now it's small scale, so we're not doing 5,000 students. We're doing five rooms or something, if I recall. And they will go in and they'll triage some, uh, you know, pretend victims. They'll actually transport some to the hospital. The hospital will prepare itself for that as well. So it, we were trying to think of everything we have in there. There's obviously been some of these model drills going on in the country, and so our emergency manager for our county has been um, mo um, partnering and working with those. So, thank you. Is any is the, uh, you went through a lot? Is that um, as far as the safety measures written somewhere? All of this progress. So we have what's required to have an emergency operation plan, mm -hmm. and it is it has everything in that, but it is protected. I'm talking more what the district schools going back to so several of my communiques I have mentioned these things going on in there as I've gone along and done so on that so we have an EOP plan as well and so we've we've upgraded that moved that through at one point I would have said it was a model but now almost all districts have the same um, but it's a large it's our go-to plan book of course you know there's gonna be some variations that you never have thought in there but I mean it's got you know from who you should call what we could do to how we shut off power how we do this all that in that plan and that's shared with state police and our emergency manager as well I, I would tell you that um, that we're about as prepared as school districts can be doesn't mean in any way I'm gonna guarantee you that we've got everything right on this um, any one of these schools have gone through it and you've talked to some of their personnel, it's unbelievable from afterwards, from the amount of dollars you need to redo the building, to hire staff that you've lost in the incident, to mental health side of what you're going to do. If we had an incident, this is a huge community thing that's going to occur. And so it, it's a big thing. It's been looked at, obviously, because we've had too many and we now know some of the things that have gone out there. The other one I'll tell you is all the work we're doing, we got to think about some of the other things that haven't occurred yet. And so we're looking at badging your students on buses. We're looking at GPS tracking of our buses. Um, we're looking at stadiums and playgrounds. And how far do we go there? Is it going to be, do we need to turn our stadiums into Comerica Park where you don't get to bring a bag? And, and you know, you got to weigh that. I don't know. We haven't had any incidents, but where do we go and how do we over it? Do we really have the manpower and the dollars to actually have someone there with a wand and go through everybody? And so rest assured, we, we're looking at all of this. So it's a, I was doing a lot of it and I still do, but it falls under Jeff's area. So Jeff and I, um, we go to conferences, we go to state police conferences, we go to everything we can to try to learn and try to stay ahead of this. And if there was one thing that kept me up, would keep me up at night, it might be this, because I think all we plan to do, we're still vulnerable, just like you are at your homes. When I go and talk to my teachers and the kids, they always say to me, but there's so much glass in our building. 
And I say, yep, so is there on the front of my house. And the whole idea why I locked the front door, despite all the glass on there, is to slow him down. To slow him down to allow me to do one of three things. Call emergency, barricade myself, flee, or attack. And so that's another thing we've put in. And so we used to, all schools went into, just we just barricade. And um, some experts would say, there's too many people to allow them to make decisions beyond that, and you might cause more casualties. Well, through time, um, some of the incidents we've had have proven that the, that may not be true. Each one's circumstantial. So we use, we use a protocol that was developed by a group called ALICE. You guys better help me. Alert, lockdown, inform, 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 evacuate. evacuate. And so we're... we're 60% of the way fully implementing this so our staff can make that decision for you. Someone's coming in the front of Central Park, you hear gunshots in the front office, why wouldn't you flee out the back to the community center? Or he's coming to your classroom and you've got 28 of you in the classroom, why wouldn't you throw something to distract him, attack him to do so? And we've seen that. You know, you've seen that even unplanned in every incident we have. And so I think that's another good protocol um, going on. But with all that going on, everything we have, playgrounds are vulnerable, buses are vulnerable. We haven't had it happen yet. So most of the bad guys who have taken uh, victims have done so in open spaces. They don't necessarily break into classrooms and go into classrooms. But let's be honest, these weapons, everyone says, well, just build a brick wall, be safe. It's not stopping those weapons, guys. If you understand, it'll slow it down. But the guns that are being used, they will go through our brick walls. And so you know, how safe and how you can make, just like your home's, to a certain extent. So and then response time by the police. SROs are there. We've uh, done a lot of exploring on, on where his weapons are, his protection equipment are, to make him as most efficient. You saw the one in Florida where the officer didn't respond. All our officers have been trained heavily to do so. They've been chosen for a specific reason to be in those buildings. And where we put their equipment is vital as well to react. So he's our first responder, obviously, and then how fast the rest of them can get there. And for us, being in the city, we're in pretty good shape. Their response time is excellent. We've had a few false um, reports of things that we, we've got a chance to test it out from the Midland High to Northeast. It was incredible if you saw those responses. Within minutes, we had state police, sheriff, local police on scene. I think we had Homeland Security report to one of them. And all, luckily, those were all false. And then we got to set up at both Middle High and Northeast, a command center. Who's in charge? Is it me or is it them? And how do we communicate back and forth with each other? And then, by the way, how do we communicate with you, still protect privacy, still give you enough information that gives you while the incident's going on, don't report falsehoods, all that stuff as well. So we've had a little bit of practice on all of this in false yeah. stuff. So it's a big picture. So it makes you understand. There's a lot to this thing that we spend time looking at, but it still scares us. Those playgrounds, bus stop, stadium. Stranger in these high Absolutely. situations, it's people that they know and they trust, and it's other children on the school bus or yep. family members who are coming in. Yep. Um, so it, forgive my ignorance, I'm newer to the district. Yep. Case. Yeah, we've spent a lot of time on it, on all of those pieces, because you are right. Um, most of them have occurred within, not outside. So. Thank you. Mr. Cheryl, we can show where the bond stuff is on the. Yeah. So if you go down, you'll see the latest news. And then if you just keep going down in the latest news area. So put a plug in, put a plug in for Gerstacker nominations. Now is the window. Nominate a great teacher. We have a lot of them. Um, and enrollment. If you, got, if you know young four-year-olds and five-year-olds out there, they need to be in school. There's the bid uh, for carpeting at Northeast Classrooms, too. Just all that. And we keep that up to date. Like I said, it trails a month or two sometimes some of the work before we call it complete and check it off on there. So, Can I have you expand on something you said about volunteers having to show their driver's license? So I'm a Bravo approved volunteer. Yeah. Um, do a lot of stuff at Midland High. Yeah. Um, what extra stuff am I going to have to go through in the next few weeks when you yeah. change? So, so I, I said visitors. We'll have to show it. Yeah. I, um, am I considered a visitor? 
uh, as a volunteer, think, if you're already background check. Yeah, I think for volunteers, there may still be. You still have to uh, show who like you are. any new system, you may have to, you know, have someone enter your name for you. Um, they may still scan your ID. You're going to get a pass. But then once you're once you're in the system as a volunteer, because when it comes up, oh, I forgot. Yeah. So There's, so so the reason we want you still to go in is we want to know. Take one of our incidents. We want to know who's in the building, yeah, right? Where? Yep. So you will still get a badge and go in. But once, my understanding is, once you've registered in that system, it's quick. It's Seconds. quicker. It's a different process. In the system at the high school or in the Bravo system? At the high school. And, okay. and, yep. and, the, and by the way, that's district wide. So yep. some of you who do multiple schools, if you've been checked at one, it'll be mm -hmm. a different when you arrive to the other. So that communication, communication. So if I know I'm going to be in school doing orchestra stuff for a week and a half. I probably should go in before then to get registered. Yeah. Well, even even so if you're a first-time user of this uh, new check-in system, it is only supposed to take a minute or two. Okay. That's what they're suggesting because somebody is going to be there at the front to greet you still. Just like now you go sign in, you chat with whoever the re reception person is, they give you the badge. What they're going to have is a screen and they're going to choose, it's a clickable screen, visitor, volunteer, so there's categories, substitute teacher, whatever the case may be. So they're going to click uh, volunteer, in this case, your example. You'd scan your license, your name, and information pops up <coughs> on the screen, and they would type in or key in what you're going to be doing. So if it's orchestra or whatever the case may be. Once you're in, the next time you show up, they just click a button and you don't have to go through the whole process every time you're registered. Our high school kids were even point. talking about having kiosks where you know we have kids that come and go for different reasons that they'll go in and out so we know who was in what classroom where if that makes sense. Just So I, I can't remember how far I just went on um, buses so we're we're very close to badging your students on buses. They'll carry a, a badge that tell, shows when they got on, when they got off, so we know if they got on and got off. We also know who's on the bus if we had an incident. Um, and then we're probably a little further away, but soon we hope to have, and we're pushing hard, to have a GPS locating app for you as a parent that will prevent that phone call. You say, darn, the bus is usually here by now, and you go on, and you can see the bus, and you can see it's running four minutes behind its last stop. Ah, they're just running a little behind today. And that will also alleviate the load of phone calls we get to, to our transportation department out there. And so think of this. I almost hate to tell you all this. So we build routes based on this many kids in this neighborhood get on that bus. Not every kid gets on that bus. Sometimes you hold them off, don't hold them off. So if you ask me at any moment in time when a bus is moving, do I know who's on that bus? I don't. And so um, this is new technology. It's not quite there. So the GPS tracking of the buses and that are coming from logistics and industry, and they're trying to adapt logistics as an industry to a school environment where you'd be badging a kindergartner on, maybe, for example. So right now in our district, just last week, we have two special ed buses we used as pilots because there's paras on there. And the parrots are, are scanning the kids' cards on and off, and we're trusting it out to see how it goes to run a pilot. So, yeah, we're trying to stay current with all this stuff to, to control because, you know, there's a lot to it. Just like you said, from ease, you want in, we know you, but, boy, I don't know when you leave and when you go in and out. You sign in and out all the time. Not always. You thank God you do, but the truth is, others don't. others don't. And so think of the, the the parent who went in, in particularly the secondary buildings, and there's a million doors, and they go out the other door, and we never know if they actually left. This device will help us a little bit on some of that. So two questions. I'm assuming we have cameras on the buses. Yep, cameras multiple cameras. Okay, good. And then, um, question I had to say about the Let oh, me get, have you looked at facial recognition or license plate recognition? So we have, and so that one, yeah. So there's times you want to be the first one and be innovative, and there's times you kind of want to go, hey, you know, maybe it's someone to get out there and try this out. So, and I'm more of a pusher that way, um, and so we do have the ability on our camera system already, if we want to purchase to do facial recognition, but not only facial recognition, we can go because that one's a little controversial right now. Is we can actually identify you by the lengths of your limbs. And so, in the, in the shape of your face and some of those things. And so, um, we'd have to purchase that next level to do so. But our camera system is cutting edge stuff um, that allows us to do that. So, we're not there yet. But license plate recognition. 
Yeah. Yeah. How far? So that's that question. How far do we go and how far is that right? We're not really sure. It's just like the stadiums. You know, when do we, we keep just trying to figure out, is it certain events? You know, when do we step up that next level? So we go to some areas in our state that are higher incident rates than Midland, and some of those stadiums are just beginning to do that. Have you ever considered a system like Dow has, a badging in and out of the building and the plant? Because I know one of the big problems at the high school, Midland High, is the long hallway where the orchestra and the band are, and that end door is always propped open or a rock is put in place. And badge, if the, if the kids have IDs, can they become IDs that allow badging in and out? Yeah, sensors? they can. The system helps us with that, getting there. Then I always say don't make rules that you have to enforce that you're not sure you got the manpower to enforce. So when we talk about students, 1,300 students badging it out. So we have open lunches. And if I thought I could get away with it, I'd close them. I'll tell you the honest truth. But the business people probably shoot me, right? Mm -hmm. the amount of money that um, would be lost by them. So when we put in the badging, we want to try to control lunches just a little bit. We knew we couldn't completely. And so Jeff, being the principal, had to, had to deal with it at Midland High. We tried to get them all to go one through door. Yeah. And then with their badges, allow them to badge in one out. Doesn't it prevent Johnny from badging and letting all 100 through? Or badge or That's what happens. They, I keep turning this off. They would come back in a group. And the first one in would swipe in, and then 10 kids would follow. So we found what we considered a happy medium, and so we would still have them badge in or show an ID if we weren't, if we didn't recognize them. Luckily for me, I knew most of the kids, but I would still stand at the door as they would come in and, and check. And so I think that was, at least at Midland High, what we had felt was the best way to do it. This helps you all as parents. You know, we, uh, we're fortunate enough that the board sports enough that we go to national stuff. We get national magazines. We're on national listservs. We go to... So when you say, are we looking at it, or are we aware of some people doing it? We are. We're aware of all of this stuff and trying to figure out how and where and how does it fit us. I'll tell you a new one coming. Drones on rooftops. You press the panic bump, drone goes up, and it gives you a camera picture of your entire campus so you know what's going on outside. You've seen where the bad guy has figured out a fire alarm, sends you outside. That's a pretty nice target, and out you go. And so, I mean, it, it, that's already... That's a reality already. Some districts are doing that. Um, so I'm not sure where we'll go. Plus, how many dollars do we, you know, what? Yeah, to that, that doesn't go into the classroom. It's always a balancing act, I think, all of it. And then the other one is, you know, when we, when we went to the vape detecting devices, we did that because we knew it was occurring all over where we didn't know, and we knew it was um, kids making bad decisions. We knew there's two parts of that. So the camera on the buses, when we first put those on, I happened to be doing this long enough to remember that. Um, the cameras were on the buses. We really, part of it was really, we really didn't want to catch anybody. We wanted it to be, hey, I better, it's the angel on your shoulder. You better not do that. Camera's watching. Well, we began to catch people, and it was a good and bad because we saw stuff we didn't necessarily want to see in those early days, you know. And so there, and then, of course, there's, there's the educating side of it. So the vaping, we tied that with the education side of it. So one of the, and I, I came back, these guys remember, I came back, saw it somewhere, and said, I want to look at these devices. And they're going, oh, God, Mike, you know, do we really have to be the first one to try this one? And um, and as it grew, we were the, I think we were the first one, schools from all over. I think we've made this company a bigger company because of it. They're, they're adapting it all over. Our fear on that one was we were the first one in. Technology gets old, too. I'm sure that technology in a couple of years will have gone from detecting vaping and loud noises to probably detecting a whole lot of other stuff. So yeah, it's always the fear on how do we go and where we go. But we're looking at it all the time. It literally is a component of Jeff's job to watch all of the, what's going on out there. What can we do next? Have you seen a reduction in vaping in the bathrooms? Yeah. Like when, when they were in the bathrooms. Installed, yeah, for sure. So I, I liken this to... They go out campus and do it. That's it. So, so, again, I've been doing this a long time. At some point in my career, I could say, I was pretty confident inside my building there was no marijuana being smoked. Mm -hmm. It probably wasn't coming in because we were running dogs, we were doing all the stuff and everything else. I never joked that kids weren't doing marijuana. I just pushed it outside the building, which is a good thing. So we started going to cars. Oh, man, did we start getting hits out on the cars. And so it's, you know... It's the other side of it is educating kids and making good decisions, um, getting information out there, the knowledge now on the vapes and some of the dangers of that. Um, 
kids running campaigns is powerful. So we, Midland High's really done a nice job of running campaigns on that. So there's all those components to that we're always looking at all of it. So. Sounds like we've done We'd like to think we stay up with all of it, but there, every once in a while, and we make sure you understand, we're not beyond stealing from others. We tell, we do it all the time. You know, we're always watching someone. Saying, well, that's really good. Can we steal that from you? So yeah, yeah, borrow. So when we talk about a new security way to get into all the MPS buildings, and we know that we are pushing more and more CTE and trying to engage those students, some of those parents from our county are interested in engaging or maybe being a part or volunteering. We can do that. We can we can so, register yeah, and do so that. How do we get that that crossover to make sure that? You know, if those parents want to volunteer, or if those of us who are asked to go volunteer as power up and other things have a lot of cross. The system um, will do all of that. Are the other schools, we have any idea if the other schools are looking at that? You mean the county schools? Yeah. yeah. So they always look and they always, and we share. We're, we are very collaborative amongst the four of us, I'm telling you, more than most counties. And because we're kind of unusual, we're 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 big, and they're three smaller ones. And um, so, um, crisis go. We shared that concept with them a couple of years ago. Um, so they, but they have their own situations. They have their own dollar and budgets, and they'll have to figure out and trace that. But we've already talked to them about Raptor and with its capabilities and what we can do on some of those things. And any time that we can, so I don't. So I'm competitive, and I want every parent to choose Midland Public Schools, but. I also have been a lifelong educator, and I'm about doing what's best for kids across the board. And we share, including work that Brian could say was his work. I've gone to him and say, hey, will you share that with the other county schools? So we share that because we believe in helping all, all of those schools the best we can and cooperate. We do very well. So CTE, um, uh, got some really creative ideas, and I'm going to start talking to foundations and stuff about there where we might be able to go to another level on that. But. It's kind of a long-term dream. I don't know if I'll be around to complete it, but it's a thought, I think. We need to do something different in CTE. You know, we're an unusual county. We're one of the few counties in the state that doesn't have a CTE millage. We do not have a CTE center, and I've come from counties that do. And so the other one is because MPS is 80% of the county, we offer 98% of the programs. And they do come in, and we send kids out like Coleman Ag. But can we do that better? And I grew up in a trade before I was in education, and I know that there's times because of our facility or our equipment, we're not doing the best we can do, and so can we partner and find other ways to do so? Right now, we could expand welding at Midland High, but we don't have the space. And so what does that mean in the CTE areas right now? So we're doing a review of all that, and we have a lot of good ideas in the CTE area as well. And what's, when we look at it as a county thing, even though MPS may lead it, I think it's a county piece. We'll cut off the mics, but if you want to stay and ask questions, we'll do so.